Good evening, my fine feathered friends, and welcome once again, and as always, to 15 Minutes with Sebastian. Sebastian Presley is nothing more than a pseudoscientist on a one-man crusade against the Sudbury family. He's clearly a deviant and a drug user who flaunts the law on every occasion, and it's about time his nonsensical claims were exposed as nothing more than the figments of his rather vivid imagination. That was the statement released by the Sudbury Foundation last weekend, after I was arrested once again for trespassing on Sudbury land. The thing is, viewers, when my old friend Professor George Harrison informed me of a possible lead regarding a piece of recently discovered Badgerman wall art at a site near Barrington House, I had no choice but to investigate. Anyhow, more about my findings in a future episode. Though I can only surmise, judging from the rhetoric of the Sudbury Foundation statement, that I must be onto something big for them to have reacted so vehemently. Mm -hmm. Let's get on with the show, shall we? And it's time once again for the sofa sessions. Starry night, paint your palette blue and gray. Look out on a summer's day with eyes that know the darkness in my soul. Shadows on the hill. Sketch the trees and the daffodils Catch the breeze and the winter chills In colors on the snowy linen land Now I understand What you try to say to me And how you suffered for your sanity and how you try to set them free they would not listen they did not know how perhaps they'll listen now starry starry night flaming flowers that brightly blaze Whirling clouds in violet haze Reflect in Vincent's eyes of china blue Colors changing hue Morning fields of amber grain Weathered faces lined in pain Are soothed beneath the artist's loving hand Now I understand What you try to say to me And how you suffered for your sanity And how you try to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how could not love you but still your love was true and when no hope was left in 
sight on that starry, starry night. You took your life as lovers often do. But I could have told you, Vincent, this world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. Starry, starry night Portraits hung in empty halls Frameless heads on nameless walls With eyes that watch the world and can forget Like the strangers that you've met The ragged man in ragged clothes The silver thorn, the bloody rose Lie crushed and broken on the virgin snow Now I think I know What you tried to say to me And how you suffered for your sanity And how you tried to set them free They would not listen, they're not listening still Perhaps they never will. If I were to ask you who it was that stole from the rich and gave to the poor, I'm quite sure that most of you will conjure the image of a Robin Hood. But here in North Compass, one might think of another heroic legend. For you see, as a child growing up in North Compass, my grandmama often told me the story of Thomas of the Trees. A common man whose life was devastated by cruel taxation imposed by King John. Though it must be said, no one ever mentions that his brother, the supposedly good King Richard, spent the majority of his life either at home in France or pillaging his way to and from the Holy Land. Apparently, poor Thomas lost everything, and after his wife ran off with a nobleman, he was even forced from his meagre dwellings. But Thomas, seeing the injustice around him, and with nothing more to lose, decided that enough was enough. The story goes that, much like Robin of the Hood, he began to fight against these harsh taxes by stealing from the rich travellers along the pilgrim's path, and he would distribute the coin collected among the local poor and needy from Badgerton to Hodge. However, unlike Robin of the Hood, Thomas of the Trees came to a rather unfortunate end, at least when my grandmama told the tale. When Lord Sudbury's men pursued him into the hilltop forest of Elfia Hill, grandmama also claimed that Mother Compass herself appeared before him, judged them as wrongdoers, and finally dispatched every last soul. Grandmama could be a frightening lady. As I say, listeners, this is but a children's story and not to be taken too seriously. However, it is, nonetheless, another strange tale.
of North Compass. Now then, some years ago, I had the enormous pleasure of meeting with fellow investigative author, Mr. Graham Hancock. As you know, listeners, both Graham and myself share the belief that mankind's history is a far richer story than conventional archaeological constructs would have us believe. Indeed, there may well have been numerous high cultures that rose and fell long before we previously thought, and most of the time the evidence has been in plain sight. For example, the megalithic base stones of Baalbek. Baalbek is clearly the remains of a Roman city, showing an abundance of evidence from its violent past. However, there is still a good deal of controversy regarding its builders. For you see, the megalithic base stones upon which the Temple of Jupiter resides are clearly from a much older period and upon further examination appear to be some of the largest cut stones ever seen. And yet, despite many years of scrutiny, it seems both architects and archaeologists are unable to explain the mystery of who it was that built them. However, it was at Baalbek that Mr. Hancock and I first met, and after imbibing a great deal of alcohol, I began to explain my own passion project, the legend of the Badger Men. I'm afraid I don't remember exactly how the evening ended, but it's always good to talk shop with someone of Mr. Hancock's caliber. The next day I returned home thinking that would be the end of our interactions, but last January, quite out of the blue, I received word that Graham would be passing through North Compass during a lecturing tour, and that he would very much like to meet up and perhaps peruse some aspects of my research. Mm, then of course the pandemic hit and buggered that right up. Hmm, time for some more music.